In this video, we're going to walk through how to code the VGG architecture in PyTorch. But uh, let us start with understanding how it works first. So here's the VGG paper. We're not going to read the entire paper. We're just going to look at the, the part where they mention the implementation details. So specifically the sentence, the convolution stride is fixed to one pixel. The spatial padding of conv layer input is such that the spatial resolution is preserved after convolution, i.e. the padding is one pixel for 3x3 conv layers. So if the kernel is 3x3, three three, the padding is 1 and the stride is 1. And also max pooling is performed over a 2x2 two two kernel with a stride of 2. And then they have some different VDG architectures. So really there are several different VGG architectures and the one that we're going to focus most on is VGG 16 because that's the one that's most popular. I'm actually going to show you at the end of the video uh, of how to implement each of them so you can choose. But the one we're going to focus on is this one and why it's called VGG 16 is because it has 16 weight layers. So if we go through just briefly, they say conv3. Uh, the 3 here means that it's a 3x3 three three kernel. Right, and as we saw above in the text, three by three kernel is associated with a padding of one and a stride of one. And uh, that's the nice thing about the VGG architecture is that using uh, those parameters, uh, the the image resolution or the size of the the number of features always stay the same. So the it's the same convolution. Uh, and the last one here is the number of channels or filters uh, that's uh, the output channels. So uh, we input uh, RGB, so we have three input channels. Uh, after the first layer, it's 64 output channels, 64, uh, and then 128, 256. So we see that the number of channels is just doubled after, in this case, two conv layers, two conv layers, uh, and then doubled after three conv layers. And uh, yeah, so in between those uh, blocks, I guess you could call them, we have a max pooling. Um, and the max pooling is with a kernel of 2x2 two two and stride of 2, which means that the, the, the size is halved. So let's say we have 224 by 224 uh, in, uh, like uh, image that we have as input then after each of these conv layers, it's going to stay exactly the same. So it's going to be 224, 224 after this. But after entering, uh, after leaving the max pool, it's going to be 112 times 112. And similarly, here it's going to be 112 divided by 2, uh, etc. So uh, after doing all of those conv layers, we go to another max pool, and then we have three fully connected layers. Yeah, so that's the basic of the architecture. Um, let's go back to the code and try to code this from scratch. So I've summarized the VGG uh, architecture like this, where the integer values represent the output channels after performing that comb layer. Or if we write M, that means that it's a max pool. So after doing all of those, this is the comb layers part of the network, then we do a flatten and we use three uh, linear layers. So what we want to do now is we want to essentially create a class which we'll call uh, VDG net. We'll inherit from the NN module. We'll uh, define an init. Let's say we also input the uh, yeah, number of in channels and uh, yeah, the number of classes, I guess, number of classes that we're gonna use. And the first thing that we're gonna do is call the super VGG net init. So we inherit, uh, we run the init of the parent method. And what we want to do now is essentially we, we can create uh, we can do like we've done in the previous videos, like self.com1 is nn.com2d, etc., and specify all, all of these. What we're going to do is actually something more 
um, clever, I think, and it's going to generalize better. And we're going to be able to implement all of the VDG architectures and the code is going to be uh, cleaner as well. So we're going to have a forward as we always have. And then we're also going to create another function that we're going to call it create comp layers. And we're going to send in the architecture. So the first thing that we want to do here is uh, is define. So we, we call self dot in channels is the number of in channels, and we can set them to three and a thousand by default. Yeah. So then what we want to do is that we want to call uh, well, let's say self dot com layers. We'll create all the com layers from this function. So we're going to call this with our VGG16, the list of how to construct uh, the com layers. Since really all the information is stored in this, uh, this array here, right? Since we know that it's always going to be a three by three kernel with a padding of one and a shred of one. So really that information is always the same, no matter what the output channels are. So what we want to do here, is that we're gonna we're gonna call uh, layers to be an empty list. We're, we'll set the in channels to be self dot in channels, and then we're gonna go through each in that architecture. So we're gonna go through each in this list. So let's, let's call for for x in in architecture, and we're gonna check if the type is is integer then we know that it's going to be a, a conv layer, right? So what we're going to do first is that we're going to call the out channels to be X, right? We know that it's going to be first in channels is three, and then it's going to be 64 out channels. And then what we're going to do is then we're going to add layers plus equals, and we're going to set all of those uh, conv, uh, just add them to layers uh, with this for loop. So this is going to make the code a lot cleaner. And then we'll set in channels to be in channels. Then we're going to set out channels to be out channels. Then we're going to set kernel size to be three by three, or I, we don't have to write three by three, but yeah, we can do that to make be clear. And yeah. And then a stride of one, and a padding of one. Then, yeah, let's see. Yeah, what we're gonna do is actually something that's a little bit different from the the. You you don't have to include this, but there's really no reason why not to do it. Since it, like the only reason why it's not there in the VGG architecture is because it wasn't invented at that time. Uh, so we're gonna include a batch room layer. And then we're going to do a ReLU, right? It's a pretty standard uh, convolution, uh, batch norm ReLU. Uh, you can remove this one. Um, this is not included in the original VGG paper. We just include it here because uh, it's going to improve performance. Yeah, yeah, let's see. Is there something missing? Yeah, so we need another parenthesis here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say, if this is the out channels currently, right? X is the out channels. Then we need to input the in channels for the next comp layer that we're going to create. So the in channels now needs to be equal to X to update the in channels. For the next layer, the in channels are going to be 64 if we're considering the first element in the list. But if it's not a integer value, we know that it's a string. So we, I guess we could just do else if x equals m. Then all we're going to do is add a, a max pool. And we know that the kernel size uh, is 2 by 2 and the stride is 2 by 2. And yeah, the only thing we need to do in the end when we return it we're going to call nn.sequential and we're going to do um, star layers 
essentially unpacking all that we stored in the in the empty list and the PyTorch is gonna create a entire block of all of those uh, com2d batch norm relu that we've created and all we want to do here then is yeah so we've already called uh, create com layers I guess self dot com create com layers and the only thing we need to do more is we need to create the uh, the fully connected layers, right? The, that was the conv layer part. Then we have the the flatten and the linear layers left. So we're gonna do self dot fully connected. Uh, well, let's go f f c s, and we're gonna again use n n dot sequential. So n n sequential is like. Uh, when we're having a lot of, when we're using a lot of uh, like NN linear, uh, NN conv, it's, uh, it can like make it more compact if we just include them in a NN dot sequential. So in this case, we can use NN dot linear. And all we want to do now is just create the linear part. So we have NN dot linear. And the number of channels that we have is going to be 512. And what we're gonna have left of the the image is a seven by seven. Yeah, I guess you could. I guess we could uh, calculate it quickly. So we have, we have two twenty four, and then we have one max pool, two max pool, three max pool, four max pool, uh, five max pool. So we have two raised to five, which is seven. And. The, the next is going to be 4096. This is just what they chose. Then we're going to do nn.relu. nn.dropout. I don't believe I mentioned that they used dropout in the... Uh, when we went through the implementation of in the paper. But they use a dropout as well in the linear layers. And then they have another linear... Uh, 4096, 4096, and another relu, and another dropout, and another linear. And yeah, we're going to call the last one to the number of classes. Yeah, so that's uh, that's it. We create the comb layers, and then we do the fully connected part. And we want to call them, so we want to do x equals self dot conv layers of x, and then we want to reshape it because now we want to flatten it to the to the linear part. So what we're gonna do is just x equals x dot reshape x shape of zero comma minus one, and then again uh, call on that flattened part. We're gonna send it to the fully connected. And then we just want to return x. Okay, so now what we want to do is that we want to check that it actually works. So let's hope. We we call a model to be VDG net of yeah, we can set in channels to three, num classes to a thousand, and we can do some torch.random. And let's say that we generate a single image of uh, in channels 3 uh, to 24 to 24 and then we do print model x dot shape and so remember when what we do uh, now is that we just ran generate some random data that's gonna uh, have the form like having an image and in this case we send in a single image and uh, then we just want to print the shape and we want it to be 1 by 1000 in this case so let's run this. Yeah, and this actually might be slow. Uh, the VGG is kind of, yeah, okay, pretty fast. So one by 1000, and uh, that's what we expected. Uh, so this architecture is really, really, uh, it's kind of large. It's not large by today's standards, I guess, but still, if you don't have a great CPU, it might take a while. Uh, what we can do is that we can set it to CUDA if CUDA is available, else CPU, 
and then we can just set it to uh, dot to to device and dot to device i think that should make it a little bit faster perhaps um cuda uh, cuda dot is available and uh, Oh yeah, so we can't do torch dot cuda is available, and uh, that should also work. Now it's run on the GPU. Uh, let's see. So one thing now is that we've only implemented it for VGG sixteen, right? But the type of like how we implemented it is very general. So all that we have to do, and uh, let me get that piece of the code, and. Uh, all we're going to do is just change one thing and it's going to be a general implementation. So I replace this part here. So instead we have a dictionary which includes VGG 11, 13, 16, and 19. And then the flatten part is the same for all of those architectures. So the only difference between VGG 16 and 19 is that they have more of these uh, comb layers and that's represented in the array so all that we want to do now is just change this part we can just call vgg types of vgg 16 and this should work exactly the same yeah and we can also change this to VGG 11, uh, VGG 19, VGG 13, depending on the one that you want to use. Uh, hopefully uh, this was uh, clear. Uh, if you have any questions, then please leave them in the comment. Uh, thank you so much for watching the video, and I hope to see you in the next one.